Wow, look at that crust in the bottom. Hello, YouTubers. Alaska Prepper here. I posted a video of making some artisan-type bread a long time ago. However, I've made a few adjustments to the recipe and to the technique that I used to make it. So I'm going to make it again, especially since we've gained so many subscribers this year. I want you all to see how easy this recipe is and how easy it is to do. This bread is probably the easiest bread you'll ever make. So I hope that you try it. The ingredients are as follows. Here we have three and a half cups of flour. Right now I'm using bread flour, but you can use all purpose flour if you like to as well. Works just fine. We're gonna need a little bit of oil. It can be any kind of oil you want, olive oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, doesn't really matter. We're gonna need one half teaspoon of yeast. This is active dry yeast. And that's what you wanna use in this recipe is active dry yeast. One tablespoon of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, and one and three quarter cups of water. However, depending where you live, the humidity in the air or so, you may need a tiny bit less or a tiny bit more. Here, I know that I usually need a tiny bit more, so I put the full one and three quarter cups. Now, all we have to do is mix everything together, which we're gonna do in a minute. In addition to the ingredients, we're also gonna need a cast iron Dutch oven. However, if you don't have one, you can still try this recipe. Some people in the past have told me that they tried the recipe without the Dutch oven and it came out just fine. So now we're just going to add our ingredients, our dry ingredients to this. Stir it around. I have my water warmed up to about 120, 125 degrees. We're just going to put it all in there. And we're going to turn this until it becomes a dough. All right, now that we're done working it, as you can see, if you were watching, I ha had to add about another half a cup of water or so. I'm not sure how big of a difference it makes, but it seems to make a pretty big difference. Here in the winter, the air is a lot drier, as I am sure is in a lot of places. All right, so now that we have it pretty much all mixed in, I'm just going to go ahead and scrape the sides. Now I'm going to go ahead and cover this with a towel and I'm going to let it rest for about 15-20 minutes. We're not proofing it, we're just letting it rest. The difference between letting it rest and proofing is that when you're letting it rest, you're just making sure that you're giving that flour all the time that it needs to soak up all that water. That way it can help the gluten to start forming. So we'll be back in about 15 minutes after we cover it and then we'll go to our next step. Now stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, because like I said, this is a very easy recipe and there's no kneading involved. Ladies and gentlemen, while the dough is resting, I want to go ahead and put in a quick plug for Nutrient Survival. For those of you that have been with me for a while, know that I am affiliated with Nutrient Survival. And the reason I'm affiliated with them is because they put out a quality product. They just sent me this tin or this number 10 can of chocolate chip cookies. And for those of you that are not familiar with the Nutrient Survival brand, they are a long-term food storage company that specializes in making foods that are very nutrient rich. So for example, two of these cookies have 40 essential nutrients, right? Now this in particular only has an 18 month shelf life because they want to keep their cookies chewy so that they can taste better. However, if this is something that you're interested in getting foods or look at this, even coffees, this is one of my favorite coffees. Yes, I still love my Cafe Bustelo, and that is a staple in my household. But whenever I don't feel like making a coffee, you know, putting in the press, because it's so difficult, <laughs> I grab one of these, and these are outstanding. These coffees come with 13 essential vitamins. Let me see if I can show you a quick snapshot. If you guys want to stop the video to take a look at that, you can. Or if you want, you can take a look at them. Uh, I have the link to their site below. So I wanted to go ahead and open this and show you what the cookies actually look like. I do believe that these containers come with 15 servings. And being that it's not a very long-term food inside here because they're cookies and they're still moist, they have a pull tab for this. So let's go ahead and pull it. Let me show you what, what these look like. And they come individually packed. So there's 30 of these in there. I've reviewed one of these before, but since I'm having my coffee anyways, I'll go ahead and eat this with my coffee. This is what they look like. And these, ladies and gentlemen, are packed with nutrients 
and vitamins. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm addicted to this coffee. <laughs> you know, when you eat junk food and you're hungry an hour later, it's because the food that you ate didn't have the nutrients or minerals you needed. So that is why I affiliate with this company is because they make good quality food and it actually tastes pretty good. So you can see the cookie is still nice and moist. So it just looks and tastes like a regular cookie and it's pretty good with your coffee. We are back and it's been about 15 minutes or so. So let's go ahead and uncover this. And as you can see, it looks like it's a little more together than it was before. Very easy what we're going to do now, ladies and gentlemen. We are almost there. I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bowl with water in it. And as you can see, I got my spatula dipped in there. I'm just going to do this because we're not going to need this. We're just going to turn it over three or four times. Then set it aside to rest again. And then we're going to turn our oven on so that it can preheat. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my scraper. I'm just going to make sure that all the sides are good. Dipping it in there every once in a while so it doesn't get sticky. Now that I've got it all unstuck, I'm going to go ahead and get my hands wet. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And turn my bowl. There you go. We're done for now. We're going to go ahead and cover this and we're going to preheat our oven to 425 degrees. We are going to place our Dutch oven in the oven while it's preheating. So when the oven is preheated to 425 degrees, this Dutch oven should be just okay, as Okay, so the oven has been preheating for about 10 or 15 minutes now. What I have here is I have a smaller bowl than the one that I have my dough in, and I have some parchment paper. So what we're going to do now is, is we're going to take a little bit of that oil, and like I said, it can be whatever kind of oil you prefer. We're just going to put a little bit in here. That's probably maybe a half of a teaspoon, maybe. And we're going to take it and we're going to just coat this parchment paper with it. And this is one of the things that I changed in how I cooked this from the last video that I made a while back. I really like, and we all really like, a real crispy crust. And this will help the crust to be nice and crispy. So now I am going to go ahead and take our dough and we're going to place it in there. First thing I'll do is, is I'll get my hands a little bit wet. That way the dough will be easy to control. So you can see this dough is very sticky and that's how you want it to be. And it doesn't have to be pretty, ladies and gentlemen. Just drop it right on in there. There you go. And that dough right there will be ready to go. I'm going to cover it with a towel. And then when the oven is preheated to 425 degrees, we'll go ahead and take our next step. Now that our oven is ready, what we're going to do is this. Now pay attention, this is critical. <laughs> now what we're going to do is, we're going to go ahead and move this to the side. As you can see, I have some pot holders ready here to make sure that I don't burn my hands when I take the Dutch oven out of the oven. I'm going to put this towel right here because this is where the Dutch oven is going to Now we're going to take our lid off. And during this part, ladies and gentlemen, we want to work a little quick, but make sure that you're safe. We are going to grab our bread. You're going to use the parchment paper to lift your bread up and put, put everything into this Dutch oven. Just like that, ladies and gentlemen. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put just a little bit of oil on top of this crust. And we're going to go ahead and brush it on. Okay, that is perfect. And now we are going to go ahead and create a vent for this bread. And what I have here is just a razor blade. And you can do whatever you want. You can do a lot of little vents. You can do one long vent. I usually like to do one long vent right down the middle. I go over it twice to make sure that I got it really good. Let's do one more for good measure. Now all we have to do is cover this with our lid. We're going to put this back in the oven for 20 minutes. Alright ladies and gentlemen, it's been about 27 minutes. Now all we're going to do is, is we're going to lift this lid off and be careful because steam could be coming out of it. 
Oh, look at that. Nice. And now we're going to go ahead and put it back in the oven and cook it or bake it until the top is nice golden brown, usually another 15 minutes or so. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are taking it out of the oven. And look at that. The crust is nice and crispy. And it's a lot crispier than the original recipe that I started out with a while ago. And I believe it's because of that little bit of oil that we brush on the top. Now, if you want it more brown than that, just leave it in the oven for an extra 5 or 10 minutes. It's not going to hurt it. It's just going to make it more brown. This right here is our favorite way of eating it. So when we take it out of the oven, what we're going to do is, is we're going to use the parchment paper to lift it out and put it on a cooling rack. And there you go. We're just going to leave it like that until it cools down a little bit. I'm definitely going to be back before it completely cools down so that we can have a little piece with some butter on it. It's going to be delicious. It's time to cut into this, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to hear this. Hear that nice crust that it has? I think it's going to be really good. So let's cut into it. And look at that. Look at how nice that came out. And you all saw how easy it is to make this. And trust me, this bread tastes a lot better than any store-bought bread that you'll buy. And it costs almost nothing to make. I would say that this loaf of bread costs less than a dollar to make. Let's put a little bit of butter on this and see what it tastes like. Now look at that crust in the bottom, ladies and gentlemen. That's the bottom of the bread. We're going to put just a little bit. I'm not going to put all of this butter on it. Just a little bit. And let's give it a try. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is delicious. I caught myself almost eating the whole thing. And I was like, well, let me go ahead and finish filming this clip right here. That is delicious. I mean, I can't say enough about this recipe. It's just great. I mean, look at that. And there's no kneading involved. No kneading involved. I'm actually working on another loaf of bread from my other recipe. So I'm going to wait till that's done just to show it to you guys. This here is our second loaf, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see, I made a sandwich bread loaf. And I used the recipe that I used on the video where I actually introduced this recipe. So if you haven't seen it, go check it out. This is an awesome bread by itself. Or if you want to use it to make some French toast, which is what I'm going to be using this one for today. Oh my goodness, comes out great for that. So I hope that you all got something out of this today. At the very least, go ahead and try the artisan style bread. It's very easy to make. And I guarantee you, if you eat bread, you're going to love it. All right, having said that, ladies and gentlemen, again, thank you very much for joining in today. Remember to be good to each other. When good people do good things, good things happen. Remember to reach one, teach one, and repeat. If we all did this, the world would be a better place, and you know that it will be a better place. Many blessings to all of you and your families. This is Alaska Prepper. I'm out.